this will actually be our group's third presentation today. We did two rehearsals. One of them was sort of a dress rehearsal for our staff today. We had about 50 people at that lecture. So we have it's probably the highest amount of people I have had at a brown bag, um, which is just a testament to how much staff actually supports programs like our sea turtle program. Um, this is an amazing group of teens. Uh, I do a lot of climate change education here, and um, doing the research can be pretty depressing. <laughs> and then trying to figure out a way to educate about it in a positive way can be even more depressing. But then I have these moments where I get to work with these groups of teenagers, and it gives me hope for the future. I think for a moment, like, oh, you know what, it's going to be OK. Because with youth like this that I have behind me, it's going to be OK. We just need to create more of these little monsters, <laughs> because they're fantastic. Um, they have worked for weeks. I've worked many hours with them as a group and also individually in preparing these presentations. And I think they will all nod their heads when they say it takes a lot of work to prepare a five minute presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't wanna speak too much more, but there are a couple of things that I want to say. One is we do have an honorary um, speaker. He won't actually be speaking tonight. He didn't prepare a presentation, but his name is Bruno and he's sitting next to Lee. Um, yeah, Bruno, you can lift him up, just so people know he's there. So Bruno is their mascot, so he'll be sitting up there tonight. Um, All right, explain that piece, explain that piece. And I can't explain it, I wasn't on the program. <laughs> explain the piece. Josh, you found it. Okay. I'm Josh, by the way. Uh, so this piece right here, um, when we went snorkeling in the mangroves, I uh, found it, and uh, it was actually funny because Captain was like, oh, we're not picking up trash today, so leave it. So uh, I just took it on board, and we wrote Sea Turtle 2 on it, and then we just signed our names, including Sarah, Dave, Mike, and Jenna. And it's kind of like our plaque. And hangs in Jenna's office. So I am really proud to introduce this group tonight. Um, this has definitely been a uh, fantastic journey for me just in working with all of you. So I wanted to thank Michelle, Jessica, and Chris, and Tina, and Josh, Lee, Bruno, <laughs> <laughs> Lulu, Tommy, Denise, Livna, and Porsche. Um, so even though we're going to want to clap for every single person, what I asked, this is what we did with the brown bag. It took a little while to get used to it because the instinct is to clap. But after each person finishes, we're just going to go, woot! <laughs> so on the count of three, let's just practice that. One, two, three. Woot! <laughs> See? Done. Just like that. And then we can do the big clap at the end. Sound good? All right. So my pleasure to introduce Michelle. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm a teen intern here at the Newton Aquarium. I work behind the scenes in the wet lab. Today, I want all of you to think about what your daily life consists of. For me, my daily life consists of, well, let's see. The phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. And then, what do we have here? The iPod. <laughs> wow. The two items that you will always see in the hands of an American teenager. Unfortunately for me, on the sea turtle trip, we had we was required for us to turn off our cell phones while we were in the Bahamas. Sorry. Um, and that made me a little bit nervous because I need my cell phone, but um, because they required us to turn it off while we were in the Bahamas, uh, I was I became actually really glad that I didn't have this because it actually made me more less made me less dependent on these urban survival items. But as you can as you can see, cell phones and iPods are kind of really useless underwater. <laughs> <laughs> when I was accepted into the Sea Turtle program, I wondered what is it like to be on this trip? I mean, all these people from Sea Turtle One are telling me, oh it was an amazing experience. It was just something you have to do for yourself. But I still couldn't imagine it. So I thought to myself, well, let's think for a minute. 
I imagine the Bahamas would have a giant body of water, and it would have a lot of sun, and we would be living on a boat, and there would be a lot of animals. But the most important question was, what is it like to die in the Bahamas? So I imagine myself a little, a little bit like this, but more like this. <laughs> Just a little image. But of course, it turned, a little, it turned to be looking a little bit more like this. <laughs> While I was on the boat, I realized that, you know, having a cell phone on me really kept me from seeing things in front of me, literally and metaphorically speaking. But I became so glad that I didn't have the burden of having a cell phone on me. If I did have a cell phone on me, I would have been texting all of my friends about how I saw a loggerhead seedo swim by with a remora on his back, instead of wondering why a remora, also called a striped sucker, would be on a sea toad's back in the first place. <laughs> Although some technology was banned on the trip, we did have some that was required to make this expedition successful. We had our equipment, which includes the cylinders, our regulators, octopuses, our VCDs, which are buoyancy control devices, then the very important compass. And we, had, we also had a laptop specifically for blogging about the trip of our expedition. But last but not least, who could ever forget this guy? <laughs> the head. Uh. <laughs> he was so nice. <laughs> You know, after I came back from the trip, I became so much less dependent on my phone. I become more inclined to actually see and experience everything that was around me. I become more enthusiastic about protecting and learning about the ocean. And I'm no longer afraid of chasing after opportunities. This experience really changed my life. And I really hope that this will continue to change lives in the future. Thank you. And now we have Jess. <laughs> um, hi everyone, my name is Jessica. I've been a teen intern at the New England Aquarium for about two years now. Um, I've been working in visitor education as an aquarium guide, and I've been in community programs bringing animals out on outreaches so children can see and interact with them. But this summer I'm going to be working in the Teacher Resource Center, which is right down this fall. So part of my job is to help organize the center so that teachers can easily access these free resources i also be helping out on camp and helping out on outreaches, outreaches as well. So I'm kind of all over the place, as you can see. Um, sea Turtle's been quite a roller coaster ride for me. When I started out the program, I was up and running. I was ready to do anything, but out of nowhere, I caught a cold and I was unable to complete my scuba class. Despite my efforts, I was unable to catch up with the class, and I was told I would not be able to receive my certification on the trip. It hit me pretty hard because a big reason why I wanted to go on the trip was to be able to see this marine life underwater and be able to experience it with my own two eyes and not through a fish tank. Even though I didn't get a scuba certification, I was still able to dive through a Discover Scuba program. So I'd be able to dive a couple of times as a trial, but not as much as everyone else. But I was allowed to snorkel as much as I wanted to. And I never expected snorkeling to be so much fun. It feels like you're looking through a telescope to this new world and you can see these astronauts, which were the divers, and they're like exploring this new land and all these fish are coming out, the little aliens. Um, I couldn't wait to start diving though, even though snorkeling was a lot of fun. The other teens were doing their certification dives, so it was pretty hard to sit there and just wait my turn. I'm like, it's really difficult. Um, but when I finally got into it, it was really I seriously thought I would cry when I got down there because I wanted it so bad, but when I got down there, I was really stunned because it was just so beautiful. Um, it's very different from snorkeling. You feel like you're in this new world now rather than watching it from above. And I had been so used to snorkeling at that point that I forgot that I could look up when I was scuba diving. <laughs> so like seeing this fish swim up above me was really incredible. Um, diving gives you a really a whole new perspective on the ocean. You feel a lot more intimate with it rather than when you're um, snorkeling or swimming or reading it from a textbook. I think I fell in love. My first dive was in Bimini Road. 
Our captain, Captain John, gave us a brief introduction on the dive site. The arrangement of these rocks, are kind of, they're geometric, and the way they look, it's like as if they're deliberately placed. Um, there's a legend that says it leads to Atlantis, or it's connected to the Bermuda Triangle. When I got down there, I was trying to pay close, close attention to the formation, and I couldn't figure out if it was man-made or if it was a natural coincidence. It's kind of awkwardly in between. It's a mystery, so I wondered how these rocks came together. After some basic research, it seems that most scientists believe it's natural. Limestone or beach rock can often rearrange themselves close together, but um, other scientists say that this doesn't explain why Bimini is the only place in the world that has a strange beach rock formation. After looking at diagrams like this one, it makes it hard to believe that it wasn't influenced by humans, because it looks like an actual road. They say it could have been part of another structure like a wall, though. Now I just want to dive as often as I can and learn as much as I can. I've been pretty afraid of science in my high school career, but after this I'm considering double majoring in something like marine biology or environmental sciences. There's still mysteries in the ocean. We have a lot of information, but we don't know everything. Seeing Bimini Road definitely enhanced my interest in science. It's exciting to look at something that most people can't definitely explain. It's like detective work. Maybe Bimini Road was leading me to my new passion. Sea Turtle was the best. I never knew I'd be making strong bonds with my teammates or be so inspired to continue diving, learning and protecting the ocean. I definitely recommend you to give Scuba a try if you haven't already. There are dive shops all around Boston you can visit or you can apply to this program next year. Our mission is to keep this, pro this program going so you, can, so you or people you know can experience this wonderful opportunity. If there's anything you can do to support the future turtles, we would greatly appreciate it. You can read last year's blog or this year's blog and just spread the word. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> and now we have Chris. Hi, my name's Chris. I'm a volunteer here at the New England Aquarium, and I work in the, which is visitor education. Uh, this is a picture of me on the diving trip. So I wanted to start off by asking how many of you used to spend your childhood on the Cape or any other beach? All right. So while you were there, did you ever wonder what life was like under the water? I know I did. As a kid, I would spend my summers on the beach boogie boarding, body surfing, and building sandcastles. All that fun stuff. It wasn't until I first started snorkeling that I found well, that I became fascinated with the world's oceans. This fascination soon turned into a passion. I became more involved in studying marine biology by participating in the WOW Explorers program and also attending Harvest Discoveries Camp here at the Newman Aquarium. When I first started volunteering here, I found my passion in studying sharks right away. Sharks are one of the most endangered or most misunderstood animals on our planet. Ever since the 1975 film Jaws by Steven Spielberg came out, there had been a lot of underlying mass hysteria. Fishermen began to go out and kill in sharks, thinking that they were making the beaches more safe for humans. In 2001, the media caught a break when an eight-year-old girl was attacked and lost an arm by a bull shark on Long Island Beach. This was dubbed the Summer of the Shark by media stations. This event increased the hatred and fear of sharks, and people, what people didn't realize is what, when they killed sharks, they didn't just take a life, they also messed up the natural balance in our oceans. Sharks are like the guardians of the sea. They shape the way marine life evolves, and they tend to prey on weak and injured animals. This ensures a stable and healthy ecosystem, kind of like our checks and balance system used by our government today. Shark finning is one of the biggest reasons for shark deaths today. The main reason for shark finning is the Asian delicacy shark fin soup. This soup is popular in Asian culture because it's believed to give you good fortune and health, when in reality it actually isn't. Although I did not witness shark finning on my trip to the Bahamas, I did see deforestation of mangroves. Mangroves are an essential part to marine life, reproduction. They are a series of underwater forests with roots that crisscross one another to protect juveniles from predators. Not only do they provide protection, but they also provide food as well. With the destruction of the mangroves, predators can move further in 
eating the juveniles, and this gives the juveniles fewer places to hide. If the juveniles get eaten, then many marine species will have trouble repopulating, and this will also mess, mess up the natural balance of things as well. By spending 10 days on a boat with, without a cell phone or a computer, my mind was more open to the problems our oceans are currently facing. This also helped me spread the message to the public when I came back home. I think if all humans took the time to slow down with their busy lives and gave up those non-essentials, then we would be more focused on our impact and figure out how to better protect our planet. The message I want to leave you all here today is that you don't need to be a marine biologist to help protect our oceans. Just by donating money or volunteering at your local aquarium or conservation group, you're already making a huge difference. Thank you. And now we have Dina. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Dina. I've been a teen intern at the aquarium since the summer of 2009. I started off working in the visitor services department and at that point I had no interest in marine science at all. I just wanted to start making some money on my own. Throughout the year that I worked through visitor services, whenever I would have free time, I would always go to the windows of the giant ocean tank in the aquarium. I would sit at one of the windows and just look in. I would always say to myself, I wonder what it's like being able to dive in there, having everything within arm's reach, rather than looking through a glass like I was doing. I was inspired to learn more about the ocean and about marine life. This past year, I got the opportunity to work behind the scenes in the dive department with Lulu, Josh, Sarah, and Mike. Being a part of Sea Turtle has greatly impacted my life, and it's definitely made me realize how much I need support from people around me. Throughout the program, we learned to work together and handle any tough situation through teamwork. In addition to our pool sessions, we also attended weekly classes that basically focus on team building, marine science, and the fundamentals of diving. While we were in Bimini, we went on a night dive at the Sapona Wreck. We were split up into two groups, and that night I was in the second group. There was definitely a nervous energy going around the boat. None of us have ever been on a night dive before, so it was going to be a totally new experience for all of us. However, we somehow had to put our nerves aside because before you knew it, the first group was going into the water. When group one made it back to the boat, Sarah had informed us that the current had changed and it was too strong to continue with the dives that night. Uh, we were all kind of bummed out, but she just said that we would dive the next night instead. Diving currents can potentially be dangerous. Currents are somewhat like a flowing river within an ocean. They're caused by differences in salinity, temperature, and by the wind. Divers should always be conscious of currents because they can physically drain your energy when you try to go against them. It's really strenuous and tiring. The first group told us their stories about the night dive, so it made us less nervous and we were excited and eager to get in the water the next night. The next night we set up our gear, along with two flashlights and a glow stick, to the back of our tanks for safety. The dive plan was that we would swim into the Sapona and ascend, and Sarah would just check if we were okay and everything. Once we got into the water and descended, we realized that the current was also very strong that night. Usually, currents tend to be less powerful when you swim on the bottom rather than at the surface, but in this situation, it was just strong everywhere. We didn't get to dive the Sapona, but that was the least of our worries. We, were just, we decided to swim on the surface with our regulators in our mouth, and we were trying to get back to the turkey line, which is basically a long rope attached to the boat. It has a buoy on the end, so divers can hold on to it when all the other divers are getting into the water so they won't drift away with the current. The skills that we learned in the previous weeks leading up to the Bahamas essentially helped us. Fish instinctively know to school together in their natural habitats. So can anyone tell me what those school fish are? Anyone? <laughs> yes, Bill. Uh, are they French runs? They are. <laughs> <laughs> so these are French runs. Um, they're one of the most common schooling fish that we saw on our dives in Bimini. French grunt schooling together is a safety factor against predators and it also helps them to survive in their natural habitats. When you're diving, you should always have a buddy support just in case something happens to you. On land, we're pretty independent people, but when we're underwater, we're out of our element, so we definitely need each other's support even more. 
In order to get back to the boat, we more or less acted like fish in school together. We may not exactly be fish, but we do exhibit some of the same characteristics that fish have. Even though our dive didn't exactly go as planned, I really learned a great amount from it. Instead of dwelling on the fact that we didn't get to dive this opponent that night, I took it as a positive learning experience rather than a negative one. Sea turtle is an experience that I'm never going to forget. Seeing a school of fish up close for the first time and not just through a glass, the lasting friendships and the hands-on learning is something that I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. Working in the aquarium has opened up so many great opportunities for me and I'm so thankful that I got to take part in the program this year. If this program continues next year, I know that another 11 teens just like us will get the experience, will get to experience the ocean firsthand and have one of the most memorable April vacations of their lives. Thank you. Woo! And here's Josh. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> My name is Josh. Um, so currently I'm a teen intern here at the New England Aquarium. And um, I've been in departments such as visual education. Um, this past school year I worked in dive. And uh, I'll be working with Porsche this summer in the West Wing. And being at the aquarium, I knew there was uh, many opportunities, but not one as big as sea turtle. Uh, I remember me being interested in diving and my supervisor Chris, I actually emailed him asking if he knew of any dive, dive programs and he directed me to Sarah here and Sarah told me basically just wait because uh, we're trying to get the seizure off the ground again. And I waited and after a vigorous process and application, I got in. Uh, sea definitely brought in my mind on both oceans and interacting with other people and it basically taught me that life is a journey, and you're always going to meet new people and do new things, and you're always going to learn something every day. Um, of all the things I learned on sea drill, education-wise, um, the thing that struck me the most was corals. So, does anyone know? Well, most people think that coral are not living. Do you guys know that coral is living? So, a coral is an animal, and it forms a symbiotic bond with Susan Deli, which is an algae. And uh, they work together to basically support each other. The coral creates a home for the Zuzenthalae, and the Zuzenthalae in return gives them food. And I was really interested in that because it makes up most of our oceans. And if there's no corals, what's going to happen? Uh, corals provide homes for organisms, and it's basically what keeps them safe. And I was interested, it was interesting to see how they would play out in the, in the wild. Different colors, different structures. I actually got stung by fire coral when I was in Bahamas as well. And it really struck me as something very important because it's essential to our oceans. And um, right now, coral bleaching is happening. Coral bleaching is basically where um, the Juzenthali is leaving the coral, leaving it colorless, white, and it's not useful to or the organisms. And we need to do something about that. And I'm already at the aquarium, so I'm already doing something. Um, also, uh, on this trip, I had very memorable moments. Uh, I remember my first giant stride into the water. It was different because we were used to the pool water, um, and it's usually fresh water, and all the reactions were the same. We sound like candles spinning because the water was so salty. Um, but it was interesting because you can look down and you can see just barracudas just there, and it was crazy. Um, also, the night dive was one of the most memorable moments of Sea Turtle. Um, I remember when we were, before we were gonna get in, and I'm looking down, and Sarah's like, yeah, that's what we're gonna get into. I'm like, Sarah, that's a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really scared, but I finally got in, and it was probably the best dive I've been on, of all Sea Turtle, of all um, the dives I've been on Sea Turtle. And it just, it changed my life. Um, we see organisms we didn't see during the day. Uh, we see uh, parrotfish in there, mucus cocoon, which is basically what they use to um, protect themselves at night. And it was interesting because different organisms come out in the day than they do at night. It's kind of like the city. You all know who comes out at night. <laughs> um, that was a really memorable moment. And we all bonded. And uh, this is something we did. Um, we would do something like called uh, update or um, 
basically we do something every day, different groups, and we did this where um, we show how we felt after a certain day or after a certain dive. And it was interesting to see what everyone had to say. And bonding with the rest of my peers was really special because I feel like I know them more than my own friends at school. And being in this program really changed my life. And putting your support in this program and donating and reading the blogs will really help this program for next year. And it will help change the lives of the another 11 teens. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> and here's a little. Wait, wait. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Lee, and I'm also extremely nervous, so I apologize if I stutter or any of that good stuff. But I am a teen intern working here at the New England Aquarium. I'm working here this summer in visitor education with a climate change focus. In the three years that I've been working here, I have had lots of opportunities to learn, but the greatest opportunity for me to learn was actually through Sea Turtle. One of the most memorable parts for me about Sea Turtle was when we were snorkeling in the mangroves and we were coming back. Now mangroves are forests or trees that grow in salt water and their roots protect coastlines from being eroded by storms and hurricanes. So they're pretty important for the environment. But as we were coming back from the mangroves, we, well to get to the mangroves first of all, we got loaded up into two small motorboats called Zodiacs and our captain drove us out to the mangroves. And as we were coming back, Captain Lou suddenly stopped our Zodiac and told us, you have seven minutes, go. And we didn't really have much time to think, go where? Because that was already cutting into our seven minutes. <laughs> but we put on all our, our gear, and we hopped on into the water. And it was one of the most amazing experiences ever. We were snorkeling on top of an artificial reef. And our, the first thing I saw was just this metal structure of man-made objects, kind of like shopping carts, anchors, parts of boats. So it was all man-made objects. Yet, I blinked and opened my eyes again, and I saw all these lionfish. And that was pretty amazing for me, because lionfish were one of the animals that I really wanted to see on this trip, besides sharks and sea turtles. And here's a pretty good, cool image of a lionfish. <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? <coughs> so, lionfish are actually an invasive species, which means that they don't belong in that part of the world. They're not supposed to be in the Bahamas. They were introduced to the Caribbean by humans, who bought them as pets, but when they got too big for their fish tanks, they released them back into the ocean, which is a problem because lionfish have venomous spines on their backs. So they thrived wherever they went. They started eating all the other fish's food, so they're kind of taking up all the space that native fish are supposed to be inhabiting. So they're a pretty big problem for the ocean's ecosystems. Yet, I didn't really think that they were going to be down there for me to see when I got down there, but they were there. The coolest thing about this lionfish sighting was actually because during all our dives throughout this trip and all our snorkeling experiences, we only saw lionfish every once in a while, one lionfish here or there hiding under a reef. But yet here in this man-made artificial reef, here's one, but it's not the one we dove in, but that's kind of like what an artificial reef looks like. It's kind of like a metal structure. But there were lots and lots of lionfish here on this artificial reef that was created by humans, and yet lionfish are kind of like a human-created problem. So is there some kind of connection between that? Is it really just a coincidence? But then I got to wondering, what if it isn't a coincidence? What does that mean for the ocean's health then? If all these animals that are introduced by humans are creating problems and we're solving them by creating more human-made reefs rather than just leaving the natural reefs the way they are. So these are the kinds of questions that I'm sure no other teenager would ponder about during their April vacation. But <laughs> that's the kind of thing I was thinking about because I was learning and had hands-on experience with, and got to see all this with my own eyes while we were down there. But all these questions and all this wondering, I got all that in just seven minutes of snorkeling in the Bahamas. Imagine what it was like living on a boat, diving, snorkeling every day for 10 whole days. Sea turtle was an amazing experience for me, and I got to learn a lot. But not only that, 
it is also one of my most meaningful accomplishments, completing the program, getting dive scoop, scuba dive certified, learning to swim in order to do all this, but also because I got to meet all these friends down in the Bahamas and we got closer together as one big family. It really meant a lot to me. And on top of that, I feel like I can face a lot more challenges along the way. And that's why it's one of my proudest accomplishments. And this is also why I'm very proud. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, really hope that Sea Turtle can continue providing this opportunity for many more teenagers to come. Thank you. My name is Lulu. I'm a teen intern here at the New England Aquarium. I started out last summer in the visitor education department, um, but I continued over the school year, and I now work in the dive department with Dina and Josh and Sarah and Mike. Um, so usually when I do these presentations, I stand up here in front of you all, and I tell you kind of what's going wrong with the world. I tell you about ocean acidification and global warming, and really depressing stuff. But today I get to stand here in front of you and tell you all what's good with the world, what's really, you know, how amazing this trip was for, for all of us. Um, so when I was little, I always, always loved the ocean. I was what you would call the water baby. <laughs> um, I, I was just so passionate about it. And, and when I finally realized what what it was, what the ocean was, I really, I took it by the reins and I went for it. I did all that I could. I went to oceanography camps. I studied it in high school and it's something that I'm going to continue through my, through the rest of my education. Um, so one of my most memorable moments in the Bahamas was my very first time that I jumped into the water. How many of you guys have had those first time moments? the first time you rode a bike. It's amazing. Okay, mine's a lot better than that. <laughs> so, the very first time I jumped into the water, I saw, I put my head under the water, and I saw a group of snappers, and they were maybe 100 yards away, and I had never seen that many fish in one spot before, that close to me, and it was amazing, it was breathtaking. So, as we descended, I continued to watch them and study them, but unfortunately, it was a skills dive, so I had to pay attention to Sarah, and I couldn't watch them. <laughs> but at one point, I did a sort of triple take. I looked back over my shoulder, and I saw them, and they were there. But then I looked back again, and they weren't there anymore. But when I looked back, they were there. <laughs> and that was the very first time I had really um, experienced the fast pace that, that is in the ocean. Another really memorable moment for me, and probably the most important on my educational level that happened, was going to the Bimini Shark Lab. That was really important to me. Ever since I knew what sharks were, I learned that I had a huge passion for them. They're the most magnificent creatures that I've ever seen. And when I found out we were going to the Bimini Shark Lab, I was so excited. They, I knew that they're, they do a lot of work with sharks and they're really good. And so I was, I was very, very excited to see what their work was and what they did. So when, I, when we got there, we got to touch that shark, and that's a nurse shark right there. Um, and it was just amazing to be that close to such a, what everyone makes out to be such a dangerous predator and it let us touch it, and, and it was okay with that. Um, so that was really important to me because I saw what their work was, and it made me realize, well, maybe that's something I wanna do. That's maybe something I can do. And so I want you all to think about today, and I want you all to realize what you've done for this group of teenagers, and, and how you've really helped us grow as people um, on a personal level and on an educational level. And I want you all to pat yourselves on the back and tell you guys and say that you did such a good job with this program um, in any way that you participated, whether you're just supporting it from afar, whether you were a parent of a teenager or you um, were a donor or anything like that. 
And I want you all to think about how you can make this program better for, the, for next year's sea turtle and the years after that. Thank you. Um, here's Tommy. <coughs> Hi, uh, I'm Tommy Peacher. I'm not a teen intern, but uh, I heard about the program from my dad, and uh, I was really interested in it, so I applied, and now here I am today. <laughs> uh, just a quick show of hands, how many of you have been scuba diving before? Just less than this morning. <laughs> uh, those of you uh, who have will understand uh, what I mean when I say that scuba diving and uh, seeing the ocean um, through a mask is a lot different than seeing it at the aquarium. Um, and in one instance, you're kind of just an outside observer, and in another, you're really immersed and almost a part of the habitat and the ecosystem. And that really impressed me. And another thing that uh, impressed me was how all the different organisms and species um, lived in unison in the ocean, and um, each had different relationships and roles uh, that they played. And, we got to see some of them. Um, one of them we got to see was uh, the remora, which uh, attaches itself to the bodies of sharks and rays and turtles and actually feeds off the parasites. And it gets a free ride and food while uh, the host gets um, clean from parasites. And another we saw was, Josh talked about it, the uh, coral and zooxanthellae. Um, the coral provides zooxanthellae with a home and in return gets nutrients. Um, we also learned a lot about the, how climate change is affecting these relationships. Um, coral bleaching, again, Josh talked about it. Uh, and there's a slide, if you want to click on that. Exactly. Yep. Hey. That's <laughs> um, As you can see, it looks much more bland than colorful coral would look. Uh, it's also very unhealthy for the coral. Eventually they'll die, uh, which is unhealthy for the ecosystems. Um, and also ocean acidification, uh, which is caused by the ocean absorbing CO2 that's emitted from fossil fuels that we burn as humans, um, which is uh, detrimental to uh, shellfish and coral and algae, which then can throw off entire food chains um, and kind of disrupt ways of life with the animals. But on a more positive note, uh, there were a lot of parallels between life on the corals in the ocean and life on the boat, which was fittingly named the Coral Reef 2. Uh, everyone had their own roles and relationships with each other. And just as um, if you kind of sit still in the water on a reef, fish become a lot more comfortable with you and will start to swim closer to you. And um, on the boat, everyone kind of opened up uh, about themselves and became comfortable. And then we became the tight group that we are today. And uh, I think it's some of those memories. I remember Linda trying to lower the anchor. <laughs> um, but I don't know, those were some of the memories that stick with us the most. Um, and I also learned a lot about myself, just being able to fit in with um, a group of people that were more or less strangers at the beginning of the trip. Uh, and one of the most important things I took away from the Bahamas was uh, how effective hands-on learning is. I learned more in 10 days at the Bahamas than I have in biology uh, all year. And um, learning in the classroom is kind of like being at the aquarium where you see the animals through the glass and you can read about them and you can observe them, but you can't really experience them uh, like we, we did in the Bahamas. And uh, I think we were all given an unbelievable opportunity and we took it and uh, definitely glad we did. And um, I think another group of 11 teens deserves the same, uh, the same opportunity. Thank you.
This is plankton. Okay. <laughs> That's the only plankton that I know about was from SpongeBob. <laughs> I, I don't like them at all. <laughs> this was when one day they decided to kind of destroy my hobby a little bit. So just a little tiny bit. And we was gonna do a plankton talk all together as a group. So we got divided into two. And I remember Dave assigned me into a position to make sure that I kept in contact with um, the captain, to make sure that nobody ever fell in the water or anything happened. That was my duty, just to make sure everything was okay. So, um, as long as I told the captain when to move and when to go, it depended how many um, how many planks we had collected all together. So, as a group, we all put the plankton toe, which I just showed you guys, into the water, and that's when I come along and I tell the captain when to move. So when he moves, you know, we get whatever we get, whatever we can catch, make sure we don't kill anything, because if we take anything out, then, you know, you're in trouble. You, <laughs> I don't know what John is right now. So I remember taking out the containers and placing them on top of the table. And I'm like, what's the plankton? I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. He was like, no, don't worry, don't worry. When you see what's inside there, you, you're not going to like what you're going to see, and you're never going to want to dive again. <laughs> I'm like, nah, nah, I want to see. So I look again, I don't see a thing. Nothing at all. So I remember just, okay, stalling around, and I'm like, I still don't see anything. As you can see, Porsche doesn't like plank. <laughs> okay? She's like, what's in there? You know? Like, hello. So I'm the same way, I'm, I'm confused, I don't know what's in there or anything. And later on in the night, I remember putting in um, a container full of plankton in the refrigerator just to make sure, well actually, kind of, um, to, like try to see what would have, what's the difference if you used to have um, a plankton in the refrigerator than during the day. So we all put them together and as you can see, Dave was um, showing us how to put a plankton, a little, just a little squirt of plankton um, into a, a little glass, which I don't think we have in here. But we all took turns looking into the microscope. And I remember looking at the microscope because that's when I like was tortured for the rest of my life. Like I have a nightmare, I have a nightmare. like I don't, I, oh my goodness. So I remember looking in and it was kind of blurry. So I was like, no Dave, I don't, I don't see anything. So okay. I'm like, ah, ah, um, is that what, hello, like, what is that? <laughs> oh, and I, that's all I seen was a brain, legs, all kinds of things. So I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, so I'm like, okay. And next thing you see, I'm like, all right, you know, it's cool, it's cool. And that's what I saw. <laughs> if you guys don't know what it looks like, that's what it is. Just imagine seeing the brain up close, a little, just a little more closer, just away from your eye. That's, and yes, I had nightmares on the boat, thinking about that. <laughs> so just, but, wait, 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 before I forget this, I do kind of, I don't like them, they're not pretty, they're not cute, but they're important, they're very important, because without planktons, what would the animals be off? You know, if planktons, like, never existed, what would happen to the sharks, stingrays, turtles? You know, they, they're really, really important to the animals underwater. So we have to make sure that they're completely protected and we have to respect them for who they are and what they do. But also we have to really, really understand why they're here. You know, and they're really, really tiny. Some you can't see, some you can't see, but they flow through current water, fresh or salty. It does not matter. They're in there. Can't see them, but they're there. Um, yeah, I was with the captain, nosy like always, just exploring <laughs> everything. And I remember going into Sapona at night, and my buddy, Linda, which I love him all, she was um, my buddy majority of the trip. Um, I remember going in, and I'm an adventurous diver, so I love to be nosy underwater. I love to look and touch and everything. So, I'm like, okay, you know, look around. I 
to him, flashlight a little bit, you know. I pointed up to Libna, and then I see all these plantains everywhere. And I look this way, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> under like with well, my compressor though, so you can't scream on the water. You're like, so you just you don't know what to do. So I see that I caught Sarah's attention, and Sarah quick, quickly goes up, and she's like, you okay? And I'm just like, I want to get out. I want to get out. I'm like, can I get out, please. I usually have Libna on my tail all the time because she's so scared of being alone and being lost. So I look to the side and Libna's like five feet away from me and she's just looking around to me inside the, inside the shipwreck. So she's just amazed that I'm over here screaming and she don't help me. <laughs> like, I that meant that. So I remember just swimming back to the boat, you know, just nice and calm. I remember, you know, these can't hurt you. They, I'm not gonna do anything to you. As long as you swim away, you won't see them again. You know, you wash it away, that's it. So I made sure I was the first one in the shower all the time, every day. So I died one, I was in the shower. And the majority of the time, I had, after all that dive and, and just having so much fun, it made me realize like how beautiful, like you guys can see the moon or the sun. Well, it looks like a both. I don't know. But how beautiful it really is. And when you do stuff like this and you take a step forward, you, you experience more opportunities. And as a sister of five, like I wanna represent myself, my family, and I wanna show them what we can do, you know, they can do too. You know, and I wanna make sure that everyone just learns the same thing I do and I just understand why. But um, yeah, thank you for, for coming out here and listening to us. Thank you very much. Woo! <laughs> okay, I wasn't really that scared that much. <laughs> No, not journey was don't stop believing. <laughs> um, I'm talking about the obstacles and challenges you face to get where you are today with your careers. I began my work at the aquarium a year ago. The summer before my senior year of high school, I applied for the Chelsea Collaborative Summer Youth Initiative. This program helped teens get summer. This team. Uh, sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> um, this program helps teens get jobs for the summer. One of the options for the program was to work at the aquarium, so I said, "Well, that's pretty cool. Why not?" And um, so I had to go through two interviews, one with the collaborative itself and then one with the aquarium. A week after my second interview with the aquarium, I got a call from Liz and she said that I was hired to work for the summer and I was really excited. But I was also really scared because I didn't know a single person here. Like I remember during orientation, I would be like in that corner just be like, hi, yeah. And um, but soon I got, com I got to meet some cool people and got to be comfortable with the people I'm working with. Before I began my work, I was struggling to who I wanted to be and to what I wanted to study. I went through like a, I went through um, these phases of careers. Like at first, I wanted to be a doctor, and then like I wanted to be an interior designer, and then I wanted to be a chef, and then um, it was really difficult. But um, I was really passionate about cooking, and I still am, but just not as strong as I was. I went to Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational Technical High School, <laughs> and um, I studied. Um, culinary arts for four years, trying to see if I could develop a passion for it, but I realized that culinary just wasn't for me. But after just working one summer at the aquarium, I was in love with marine life, and I had this feeling that I found a new passion for me. Um, after the summer, I applied on my own to work as a teen intern for the academic school year. It was amazing that I got to expand my knowledge of marine life, and I still got to do it alone. And it's also cool to brag that you work at the aquarium. Like, you say, oh, where you work? Stop the shop? Oh, shoot, I work at the aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in January, during Thursday Night Teens, when all of us teen interns got together, Jenna was telling us about this program. And I said to myself, why not? It sounds cool. And the worst they can do is just say no. And um, so I kept bothering Jenna about this, like, and I received my application. And when I brought it home, I was like, Mom, I'm going to apply this program. I'm going to learn how to scuba dive and see the fishies and the sharks and the rays. And the whole time, she's looking at me like I'm crazy. And she's like, the shark better not bite your butt. <laughs> <laughs> and she still thinks I'm crazy, but in a good way. 
But as soon as I got the application, I handed it, handed it in, filled, got my letters of recommendation for it, and we went through two interviews, a group interview and then an individual one. And then I just remember in school, like always asking my friend's phone to see if I could check my email to see if I got in. And when I got in, I was doing my happy dance, like, yeah. yeah. People are just still looking at me like crazy, but it was okay. Um, but seeing life under what, um, well, um, but learning, sorry. Um, so I was really excited and I didn't know what to expect. Learning how to scuba dive was such an amazing, was such an unbelievable and new experience to me. Never in my life I thought I'd be able to breathe underwater and explore the ocean floor. Oh, sorry. There you go, ocean floor. Um, and, um, and just being in the water in the Bahamas and seeing all this amazing life just made me very happy and calm. Um, seeing life underwater at night freaked me out a little bit. Or a lot. <laughs> um, my partner was the niece for our night dive. And it was scary, but one of my favorite dives. Um, for the first half of the dive, I was freaked out and scared and holding on to Denise for near life. Um, then just after relaxing for a little bit and looking up at the sky and seeing the stars and the moons, I was relaxed and not so scared as much anymore. And then I hear screaming that it sounded like I'm underwater. It was Denise yelling, ew, plankton! <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong? Like, and um, it was just like, it was funny because we just switched roles. Like, I freaked out, she helped me out, and then she freaked out, and then I helped her out at the end. And it was awesome memories. Another awesome memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that was when we went onto the island, and we were just like a little shopping. Um, it's different seeing fish in the giant ocean take behind glass, and then seeing the same kind of species in open water. During one dive, we saw a nurse shark sleeping under some coral. You can see it's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. Um, um, so we saw the nurse shark under coral, and it made me think that we're diving in someone's home. Like just because we don't see it, it doesn't mean that we should. It doesn't mean that we exist, and we should try to protect it as best as we can. Um, and at that moment, I also realized that this is what I want to do with my future. It's who I want to be. Eventually, I want to be a diver for the giant ocean tank at the aquarium or a marine mammal trainer. I already took the first step and got my scuba dive certificate. And soon, um, in the fall, I'm attending Lesley University with a um, environmental science major. Um, I just need to finish college and get about 60 dives. No big deal. Really. <laughs> um, but I want to leave you with this quote, and it's one of my favorites. It's not the destination that counts, but the journey. And remember, I asked you all to remember your journey to where you are with your careers. Even if you're at the top of your career, your journey isn't over yet, and neither is mine or ours. Um, the places we've been and the places we're going is going to change us in one way or another. This program has changed me in so many ways, and I want to thank you all for supporting us. So now, Hello everybody, my name is Porsche, and for the past three years I have been employed at the Marine Aquarium, working in both visitor education and the West Wing Gallery, um, behind the scenes. Um, before working at the aquarium, every minute of my life had been devoted so that I would be a lawyer, working in the medical fields, protecting patients. So naturally, when I started working at the aquarium, I didn't think that it had much to offer me, um, but it did. And as I learned more and more about the galleries in the aquarium, my passion for marine biology grew stronger. Then I began working in the West Wing, which at the time was the jelly exhibit, and I am like ridiculously in love with jellies. <laughs> so seeing all the aquarists and the divers and the research specialists made me reconsider my life plan. Um, one thing that I was lacking that everybody at the aquarium seemed to have was diving experience. And I couldn't possibly work in the field studying nidarians which is um, jellies and coral, like Josh mentioned, if I couldn't die. But it seemed like an angel was lining everything up for me because as soon as I realized that I wanted to learn how to die, I heard about sea turtle. Sea turtle was the epitome of what I needed to become um, dive certified. I would be taught by an amazing instructor, I would take a trip to the beautiful Bahamas, and I would make a host of friends whose bond would last for a lifetime. So I applied, like immediately. Um, I worked very hard on my essays, and I took much consideration into who I asked to write my recommendations. 
all of the applicants went through a, let's just say, different group interview, and then a more, no, more, more normal one-on-one -on -one interview um, with Sarah and Jenna. Things were going great in my one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the conversation was consistent, it was flowing, we were laughing, and then Sarah said, well shit, do you know how to swim? And instinctively I was like, yeah, I know how to swim. And then I thought about it and I was like, no, I don't know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I could totally survive if somebody pushed me off the dock, but I surely wouldn't be able to successfully swim the 200 meters and tread the required 10 minutes. So for safety reasons, I was not permitted on the trip. Um, I cried, honestly. But that did not stop me from supporting all of my friends that were accepted on the trip. So I hoped, and I hoped, and I hoped that Sarah and Jenna would get approval to rerun Sea Turtle. It took months, but finally, Jenna handed me a packet. It was a Sea Turtle 2 application. I swiftly reapplied, and along with my 10 other participants, um, I was granted uh, into the program. Um, this time, I knew how to swim, though. So I lacked a little bit of confidence in the water, but Sarah and Jenna and Liz were all willing to help me practice. And many days after school, we met and worked to, and we practiced swimming. Um, even Josh and Dina helped me practice my breath control and helped me work on my strokes. So with all of their support and encouragement, my confidence grew. And when that day finally came, um, the same Porsche that did not know how to swim successfully swam 200 meters and tried for a whole 10 minutes. This major milestone brought me one step closer to becoming dive certified and to be a marine biologist. But the most difficult part remained. Although I was educated about the ocean and its inhabitants, even passing on my knowledge to others, like seeing a cluster of wild cassipia, which are upside down jellies, um, at the shark lab and talking to an old couple about how nematocysts, which are stinging cells, were like killing us because they hurt so much in the water. Um, I still was a bit frightened by the thought of swimming in the ocean. My first giant stride scared the bejesus out of me, but I knew that I was properly prepared. Um, my first breath in the ocean reassured my passion a hundred times more. And as cliche as it sounds, this trip really helped me fall in love with marine biology. I realized that my passion is not just another phase, as some may say. It would be a dishonor to new teens that enter the aquarium if this program did not continue. Many events, people, and opportunities have the power to shape an individual's life. And by far, Sea Turtle has shaped all of our lives. So why wouldn't you want to grant this opportunity? Oh, I'm Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> uh, if you've gone back to your obsessive 
cell phone use. Um, I actually have it. Um, usually I would have my phone right here and my iPod right here, but I've just I've just been listening to my music, but I haven't been texting my friends a lot. I just leave in my bag and just jumble with my stuff so I can't find it. So I mean it's useful to talk to my friends, but sometimes it's just better to look around around you and see everything in front of you. Any other questions? Um, I have a question about the uh, the coral that's being bleached. Is it uh, the increased temperature of the water that's doing that, or when is that? Uh, it's um, <clears throat> as the temperature uh, increases in the ocean, um, which is kind of caused by climate change. Um, also, ocean acidification. I think uh, ocean acidification. Um, the coral will expel it so um because of the change in climate. Uh, and so, um, as it loses that, that's what gives it. That's what gives it its coloring. And so it loses that. Loses its coloring. I have a question. <laughs> so, what do you all want to do with what you've learned as part of this experience? You can all answer it. <laughs> Start. question, by the way, they did not know what I was going to ask. I'll start. Um, what do I want to What do you want to do with what you've learned as part of the experience? I definitely want to study um, jellies and coral in the fields. I think um, once, you, once you start diving, you can't stop it. And so being there and seeing things in the ocean and you know, seeing things with my own two eyes, because I look in the giant ocean tank every day and I see sharks and I see rays and I see artificial coral reefs and I even see real coral reefs at the aquarium, but it's not the same as being there, being in the midst of it and, you know, being immersed in it. And so I definitely want to continue diving and I want to make a career out of this in some way or another, even if I have to make my own title. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm attending Leslie University in the fall with a major in environmental so that's just a start, and hopefully it will be something really awesome for him. Mm -hmm. um, help me out a little bit. I forgot his name, but he was um he he had came to one of our detective class, yes, and he was a Boston police diver. Mm -hmm. Um at first I was really, really interested in on the army. I like I'm um, Physical. I like to move around. I like to work out. And me and Tommy used to work out all the time. <laughs> but um, um, so yeah, like I always wanted to go to the army, but I have this thing with my family that I'm so attached to them. And me and the older sister is like I have. It's like a duty. It's like I have to do it. Sometimes I confuse myself being a mom instead of a sister. And I feel like I have to stay close to them. So. Like, Right now, my top, top, top is either being the Coast Guard or being like the police diver, the Boston police diver. Because he's local and he stays with his family. I really love diving. It's something that nobody else in my neighborhood does. And it's, it's brought a lot of attention. Attention to the aquarium, to me, to my family. And more and more people every day tell me, like, how do I get into this? And I like that. Because it makes a change. It's Uh, this trip definitely made me uh, want to get more involved in the aquarium. Um, I don't know, I just see all, almost everyone here is an intern here. I think that, I don't know, I definitely want to get more involved and also just to dive at any chance I get. Um, I don't know, it's, it was so unbelievable to do it there. I can't wait to do it again. So, so for my next opportunity. Um, I like that not I'm going. Well, I'm not going to Lovely, but I'm going to Colby Sawyer College, and I'm going to major in biology. And I plan to also go get my master's degree in marine biology. And this program really helped me realize kind of what different um, careers there are out there for marine biologists. A lot of the, the classroom time that we had here, we talked a lot, but we had guests come in and talk about what they did with, with um, marine biology, which was their passion. So, that really opened my eyes to, to see what I possibly could do. I am going to Northeastern.
Eastern in the fall to study pharmacy. So I'm not going to I'm not going to study my marine biology or environmental science, even though I really am interested in those subjects, but it's not something I want to do as a career. But scuba diving is definitely something I always want to do for the rest of my life. So slowly I really want to get those sixty certification dives and be able to go into the giant ocean tank one more time because when we went in for our, our dives, the sharks weren't in there. So we didn't get to swim with sharks, sadly. We, then we swam with nerd sharks in the, out in the Bahamas, but there are sand tiger sharks there that we didn't get to see and we didn't get to swim close to, so that's something I really want to do. Well, I'm going to the 11th grade. <laughs> story for me. Uh, I mean, I still have a long way to go. These guys are going off to college. I'm still in high school. But, but uh, I mean, I definitely continue diving because there's always new people to meet, new places to go, and new things to see. So, getting there. But. And, and you're thinking about applying for Island Oh, yeah. So there's a program called the Island School, which is kind of like Sea Turtle. Kind of tweak though. <laughs> uh, it's basically a, a school down in Cape Lothra. Cape E, because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Cape Lothra, yeah, that place. Um, and it's basically a school where you learn about marine bio, you scuba dive, and I think you swim like four miles. One of the sea turtle alumni. I'm going to continue diving and learning more about organisms in the ocean. And I mean, the crime can't get rid of me. I'm here for another two years. <laughs> so, so that's my plan for now. Um, well, working with the aquarium and going on the trip has made me fall in love with marine biology. Um, I'm going to be a freshman next year at Maine Maritime Academy, and I'm majoring in marine bio. Uh, after I graduate, or even during college, I want to kind of travel the world. I want to go dive in different places. And eventually, I do want to become a marine biologist. Uh, well, I'm going to be a senior in high school, so I still have a while before I <laughs> colleges. But um, yeah, after going on this trip and getting to visit the shark lab, and like I said earlier, I have a passion to study sharks. I'm hoping maybe as an internship in college, I could go down there and work there over the summer. Yeah. Um, so I'll be going to Suffolk University in the fall. And right now my goal is to get my dive certification by the end of this year. That is my number one goal. And like I said in my presentation, I was, I've been really afraid of science in high school. Like I barely passed biology and chemistry and physics. So science was never my, my forte. But right now I'm really inspired to the point where I'm pretty annoyed because I have so many interests right now and I'm trying to tie them all together. I like art, I like psychology, and now I like marine biology. So I'm getting pretty mad. <laughs> I'm trying to double major in something and right now I'm like, well I already declared my major in psychology, do I want marine biology, do I want art, and I'm just going to see what happens. So. Well, I'm going to be at Boston University in the fall. And um, although I'm not allowed to have a major yet, I planned a minor in marine biology. But I, I had this dream before um, I got into a sea turtle program. Since we all live on land, I want to see what kind of worlds there are in this world. And so since I'm already exploring the land here, I want to see what it's like down below us in the ocean. And I also want to see what's above us in the space. So I'm gonna plan to major in astronomy and minor in marine biology. And this thing, this program has helped me go along in my path. Every night under the stars, Michelle was like, there goes the little tip, bro. There goes the right <laughs> 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 Dolphish? 
Um, and it's cool because we have them here at the aquarium, but in the wild they look so different. Like we put their little heads out. Of, we, we, when did we see them? We saw them on um, our last dive. Yeah. yeah. I forget which one it was. Uh, yeah, and they're just like poking out. They're really, really cool. My favorite fish was the porcupine fish. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I just stole two people's favorite fish. <laughs> um, I love seeing them in the giant ocean tank. They were my babies. I made food for them every Sunday. They never Aww. ate it. And I was like, really frustrated with them. But it was um, really special when we got to see them in the right by the Sapona Rack. Um, that was one of the key highlights of my trip because I love those. My favorite fish was the nurse shark. <laughs> Sharks are fish. <laughs> um, my favorite were the rays. Oh, I kind of forgot what the species. Southern. Eagle. Eagle and Southerns. We saw a lot of them, and Captain John Woolworth on the Zodiac, he would just point them out all the time, like, oh, there goes another one. Oh, you see the oh, rays. Eagle rays. Eagle rays. Eagle rays. But they're, they look so beautiful. It's like they're, they're flying in the water. We saw so many barracudas, and by the end of the trip, like, it was just like, kuda, kuda. <laughs> And my favorite fish was the juvenile um, yellowtail damsel fish. They look like little fish with basically like the universe pasted on their skin swing by. And pictures do them no justice. They look gorgeous underwater. My favorite animal that we saw on this trip, they're not fish, they're mammals, but we saw dolphins. And they came to ride on the waves of our bow for a good while. So. They would. They came and swam, and then everyone came out to look at them, and then they went away, and we were sad. And then in the five minutes, they came back, but everyone was already inside, so we had to rush, and people were tripping all over the place to come back. <laughs> <and come. laughs> so it was pretty awesome. Not everyone. Yeah, yeah not, not everyone. So I, I was Nina. sleeping, and no one woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so hard. <laughs>